time. G2 Esports Big Clan. Will we see a third map? We're about to find out, and we're going to kick it off with a pistol. G2 starting on the attack. Looks like they're going practically, yeah, entirely Kevlar Vest. The other side of things, a couple of nades for Tabson boosting across. Lots of bodies. This and reports heavy presence middle, and they're not so slowing down. He's trying to catch the tail end of this assault, and it results in his death. A good catch. Tabson and Tizian partner up the double T's. And short-lived to the double ends. Responding Kai, next Nico. hello. Bloodshed all over the place. Kizo, what are you made of? Nothing anymore, because that Glock looks like a laser beam. Nico from Palace to Jungle, double dink. Oof, all right, and I'm sure everybody caught the 1x bet odds at the top of their screen just there to kick that one off. Favoring Big to take the series now. If you uh, were with us just earlier, it was quite even going into map number one. I'm going to make, I have a premonition, Chad. Here we go. Yeah, Nico just got those kills. He's also just got himself an armored AK. I think he's got a bit of a point to prove. I think that Dust2 loss has really got his feckles up. You his know? feckles? He's, yeah, if he was a cat. Yes. I mean, yeah, I don't, <laughs> he's not, but um, they're up regardless. Okay, well. Uh, I'm just suggesting he's about to go um, sicko mode. All right, well, uh, let's take a look here because G2 have just feigned a lot of mid presence with flashes, but the execute's actually over towards A. They're ahead of their smoke wall here, so in they go with the MAC 10s, bounding like gazelles. Amanek, well, to his namesake, will take down Tabson. Amanek 10 wants some more as he pushes forward towards spawn, and Sirison next on the plate. Scout falls, and this one is falling apart for big. Yeah, all those uh, absent helmets have at least enabled the MAC 10s to shred through a couple. On the way back in, Tizian's Deagle's already drawn some blood. Keto's working on the round the world. He might meet Hunter here. Yeah, they're just saving their upgrades here. So if Keto can take the head off of Hunter with this one, bullets oh, are him. He's got him! Eventually, pulls it across the line. Now, I'm not sure if he wants to risk it for the UMP retrieval, especially considering now that fight is coming. nico has got no reason not to contain and defend that weapon. Maybe the radius will give him... Oh! Ooh. Slap down. Yeah. Jax does go down with a bomb. He was very low, and with that Mac 10, not everything, or not much to complain about. 4.9 as well in the bank account for him. Well, they did save the scout, so seriously gets that back. If we're looking at uh, small little consolation prizes here, Jax is going to get himself an AK-47 now. Amanek will rebuy into another Mac 10, and this is looking very good for G2 to pick up their third round. This is the type of map where you would love to see a Keto pop off. He's had a couple of those in the yeah. past on Mirage where he's just dropped absolute bombs. Now, you look at the match history page for Big, it's not great on Mirage. Their most recent was over OG within the play-ins. It was a OT, OT affair. Uh, but there's a lot of red, right? There's a lot of red. It's a map where they get the double digits, it's close. But right now, if G2 are picking into this, they must see more than a few weaknesses. Yeah, no, precisely. Next, next week, we just cleared that close underpass just in case his teammates would have encountered resistance there. Tizian is taking some liberties, B apps. The bomb is down right now, all the way passive, closer towards T spawn. So if Tizian does continue the crawl, Hunter, he would have to deal with. A bit more passive than I previously thought. This Molotov forced him even more so. But I'm going to get picked up by Hunter now, and he will head back towards A, but Tabson's pushing ramp. Yeah, and Big Clan are fully here. Oh, okay. Now that's going to alert the rest of the CTs. Tabson eliminated. Amanek collects his second. Ares, two to find. He's going to surely not repeat that. That's too much of a gamble. These AKs are coming, though. G2 starting to clamp closed on this A site. And Taris still peeking, trying to bait for Sears and scout peek. Nico coming in from the palace, ready to strike. It's Jax that's handing out the headshots, though. And Nico adds one to the list as well. So, not too much to write home about for the boys of Big just yet. He'd love that little crispy one. He sees him. Can't quite put it down range. So a couple of upgrades found. G2. Three, six, yeah, zero. Jax really scared me last night because when he posted that online with his wrist, like I, I messaged Malik immediately. I was like, Malik, he's trolling. What is going on? Yeah. Is, this, is this legit? And he was like, Oh, you know, he had a fall, but he's he's all right. Like he's going to be able to play because they look. Jax looked really good when we saw them just yesterday. Yeah. I was like, that, that's exciting. That's what you want to see, right? So uh, I feel Jax has now been tainted by us a lot. You know, I think once you join this, all we can see Nexa doing all the funny tweets. Now Jax has always been a bit of a funny guy. He's lobbing in with that too. Uh, this is a fast B. Looks like it. Yeah, they're just charging. Searson's got the AWP. He's going to get run down if he's not careful. His bodyguard is in play. Oh, not anymore. Tizian's gone. And Searson to step up to the plate. He has to deliver, and he has with two. 
Hunter responds with a double of his own design. Tabson, good dunk, two on two. Short lived though, because Tabson was just not clear his corners. Long range with the MAC 10, well tamed by Nexa. Nico is working on the flank if Keto could just isolate this duel. He does well to find it down to 40. May not be ready for Nico. He's Ooh. considered it. AKVM4 though. This is not a fun duel for Keto. He's walking straight into the lion's den. Nico exposed a good conversion and G2 keep their record untarnished. Oh, felt like Keto was aware of that, right? He kept glancing back over towards mid, the flank of possibility and frustrated with himself as he goes down. But great stuff from G2. They keep up the pace. They use those Mac 10s. And they get on into that B bomb site. Sure, the bomb doesn't go down, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because the Germans will have to opt here for just another one of these pistol upgrades. Rough start here on the second map of play, and pain will continue. Five Deagles, little bit of Kevlar, little bit of utility. When you see the buy on the other side, G2 should be looking good for their fifth. Yeah, part of me is glad that we're going to be seeing G2 not completely down in the dumps after that 16-8 conversion from Big. I mean, with so much on the line, with the performances we've seen out of both of these teams so far, I expected a real brawl. And the fact that G2 are responding with a four-round conversion right out of the gate could very well be a whole lot more. It is certainly not likely to see Big Clan find much more on these Deagles and Kevlar as G2 looking to pick this one up with their slow and methodical Red. That's the cue for them to group up and go. Wrapping into the single-handed Zentai. Oh, sight! And two locked straight out of his sight. First two contributions. The crosser was on the head. Couldn't quite pull the trigger in time. Nexa now. has made it. 3v3. Short, unable to contribute. Locked out by Nico's AK. Keto to fill that void. They're all coming in straight to that short side. And just as that chance was there, it starts to dissipate. Oh, specky shots indeed. But the ball from Nico down the nade will land. And here you go. Could be the last round of play. Stewie, oh, has to clutch out a one on two. Plenty of time on the bomb here. Oh my God. Now pick this up. They go double OT and they keep this one going. Neither team wants to give up here. And you know what's on the line. Elimination from the event. Stewie making noise now. You know where to find that. Is that a B to the end of the URL or live.intelextrememasters.com? All right, let's go, let's go. Satellite radio. Amanek. Good to see him on the scores early. Jack's catching some flack oh early as well. God. And Keto, that is this? vicious. He finds Hunter in the underpass. He's locked on in, though. Is he? Jax would have to swing wide into Searson's Orp if he wants to challenge that. Nexa from the underpass can strike as well. This is his transition, trying to catch the timing. Keto's head right there in the vice, and he can't retreat. Searson to trade. Amanek walks in, and Amanek is the one to connect, winning the head-to-head -head for Searson. I think that might be the first time. Nico from Palace. It's predictable. Zentaris is holding it. Will he check his corners? Oh! Nico, too quick. Three versus two. The bomb's on the way towards A. G2 have got it fully locked down with Nexa in that connector. They'd love to finish the job. Tabson's responsibility here. Flashes are too good. What a setup. He still gets the frag. Game on. Bomb to cross. Tizian to challenge. Nice find again from Amanek. Shaking off that Dust 2 performance quickly. And he doesn't really have the health for this, Tabson. With just two points of health. Nico in the palace. He might be able to knock his head off on the jump across. Gets the info. I don't think Tabson saw him. No, I don't think there, so, but Nico did. No doubt in my mind. Yeah, Nico's not moving, so he feels like he's trapped on in here. It's only a matter of time until he peers on out, and the timing actually works in Tabson's favor. He is lucky to be alive right here. Nico on a couple of little jiggles. Tabson will fall back and hold on to the orb. But again, sure, some great trades, some great shots, but 6-0. and oh. And 8-0 to oh for Nico. I told you, he may not be a cat, but he is mad. <laughs> Picking up steam here. Picking up steam in a big way. Now look, if the response from G2 is to come out here and absolutely shellac them, this is already a great T half. Six yeah. is fantastic. They started getting seven. Anything on top of that's cherry on top of the cake. Cream and everything, all the goodies, the sprinkles. As long as it's like a real cherry, I always feel like those little the fake ones. Yeah, not my jam. They're like, why are they pink and why do they not taste like cherry? Yeah, I don't know. Artificial cherries. Well, here's the opener, and yeah, Keto, as he tried to peel on back, just unawares of getting aggressive after the opening kill. Really trying to, uh, look, I'm trying to get in the headspace. If they took the fight to them and he gets another kill, he looks like a genius, right? But uh, not to be the way. And the max loss bonus in play. Timeout taken. Discussions being had. Sirius had gifted the AWP a light pistol upgrade again behind this. So 
It really needs to change for Big in terms of these opening picks, finding some good trades. Hunter into an SMG again. That tells you they know what type of buy they're dealing with. Had a lot of MAC-10s come out. Amanek, Jax, Nexa. Now a UMP seems to be Hunter's SMG of choice. Top mid smoke. Window as well. All right, the half buy. This and to respond, and he's gonna get boosted up, I imagine. Yeah, so we can contest short safely from that ladder room. G2 was so happy just to leave Nico to his own devices over in Palace and A side. Like he has to, you know, contend with any potential ramp pushes late. He's holding the Palace push for now. Something's changed in the conversation here. It certainly has. Resmoking mid window, that will deny a lot of mid info. And I say that, I'm not so sure. I think Searson should be able to completely dissuade them. Here comes the smoke. Tabson will be able to confirm it quickly if they do ooh, catch that nade. Softens him up a little bit. Nex is going into Palace with Nico, and so is Jax. So this would be a very interesting approach on towards the A site. Currently, there's nobody to really deal with this. It is just Keto. Mid is way too clear. B's just been smoked. Tapson's about to try and clear B, but it might be a bit too late. This will be there to support them on A. Here they come through the palace. He's got a good angle for this. The AWP, the perfect weapon for the job. There's no util that will lock him down from this angle and no one threatening connector. He pulls the trigger onto Jax. Adds one to the tally. Amanek swings out mid in response. And another chance on the AWP. It's Searson starting to make it awkward for G2 here. They have to come through ramp first. The bomb is on next, so he can't lose it there. No one able to retrieve it. He has to play for his life and it's enabled some time for Tabson to crawl behind. Nexus gone, bombs loose, G2, their first round lost, and just against the half by three frags from the Searson AWP. Five seconds left, Amanex just gonna have to hold on to what he can. And Big Clan finally break their silence, and it's off the back of Searson. Wow, you were bang on there, the fact that they didn't have anybody in place to lay down utility to displace that. Searson was just set up perfectly, shooting just like fish in a barrel right there, seemed way too easy. Now, it's great for Big to get on the board. It's great that the fact that they're going to have a bit of residual cash to work with now going forward into future gun rounds, but two in a row almost feels mandatory at this point. That's how it started, but this is how it finished. You look at this. He's not hes not pushed out of the way. He's not flashed. He's not smoked. There was nothing they could do with that approach, and I think that top mid smoke that Big threw out early, they thought it was a full-on mid control, so they pivoted back. Big profited. Got a heavy lean over towards B here. Check out this smoke that Hunter's lining up. That is going to deal with anybody over towards Catwalk as the B hit comes in, but there's nobody one. there. They're going quick, thick and fast. Tizian trying to hold on as best he can. Drops a defensive smoke of his own. That will remove the van angle. And another underhanded smoke. They want to play and change the dynamics, change the environment. Jumps into the next across air. Zataras responds nearly two. Can't quite finish his meal. Nexa lives on. And now a problem. Nico's even working on a flank on A. Oh, and you said they had to find two in a row. Chances of that disappearing with every passing second. I'm he not sure that he's going to be able to hold on to his AK. That's the end of Keto. Oh, dear. Searson and Tabson are now on notice as well. Where were they meant to save? Certainly not on A. Searson's actually going closer towards the B bomb side to hold on to that AWP, hoping they don't push towards him. He'll hear them above him exiting from Catwalk. Tabson. Going to his fallen comrade's body. Hiding in plain sight, as it were. But this is it. G2 immediately bounced back. So sure, they lost towards those uh, upgraded pistols in the saved AWP. But if you respond like this, it doesn't matter whatsoever. There's the coach Malik giving him a big clap because the half is looking fantastic at this point. Nexa, I think we heard him just there. Calling a default. That was a great shot, wasn't it? The Tizian was scrambling, trying to get close to that smoke to be a nuisance, but the jump was the problem. And the frustrations have to be starting to mount now for Big, because you know how good map one was. Now, I, look, we know... Oh, hold up, we might get a bit of mid-aggression here. Seriously's jumped on out. Considered it. Safe from the molly by his own, by virtue of his own smoke. Creeping. Now he's starting his creep. Amanek's holding it. Searson versus Amanek, quite the head-to-head, -head, and Amanek again converts. Completely turns the story of Dust2 on its head. And now Tabson looking to respond in kind. Has managed to catch Jax on his mid-swing. 
Bomb maneuvering towards A. Hunter working on that mid clear. Tabson will be cognizant that this is a possibility. Smoked off for now. Unable to contest. Nico walking palace. What is the cue? This is early from Nico. Oh, and Centares prepared. Jeez, these two, the little biff and battle they've been having over towards that palace position. It always looks like one's going to get the better of the other. And then the last minute flick on up. But now this round is on. Bomb coming up towards A ramp. Smoke to deny. For now, a minute on the clock is plenty of time to work with, and Hunter could foil all of oh, this coming be through the underpass. He's got a tiny slither. If anyone's toes was to go looking, he could have been able to shut it down. Nice passive play from Zantares. Does not fall into that trap at all. So much pressure on Zantares here, though. He's even had to go all the way back towards Ticket. So they've evacuated into a retake setup. Oh, speaking of Zantares, he went so far back, but Amanek catches him just on the little jiggle. Absent to fill the void. Two men down for either side, and another from Amanek. Here you go. All too easy. You knew there was an AWP ramp. And Tabson st strafed straight into it. They have to save again right now. Keto has an AWP over towards B. I think Hunter's heard a couple of these footsteps. There we go. 2v2, but Hunter, he's over towards window. He's got the rotations cut off. 15 seconds. Nexa was just a little too premature on that. Just before the smoke bloom connector, they will continue the plant. Tizian can challenge this. Hunter's holding, and that should be the round. What's Keto supposed to do now? Straight through the smoke and hope for Hunter to miss. It's not going to happen. And G2 making light work of this T side. Eight and one. They have won the half in the first nine rounds of play. Ooh, real problems here. Look, uh, the scoreline says it all, and another timeout is going to back that one up. There has to be a lot of conversations going on for Big right now, and I don't know how you can get back into this CT side. Taking a look at their financial situation, Sirison can buy an AWP, and Taras can buy a rifle. Tizzy in the same. Tabson and Keto are going to be a little bit more strapped for cash, but if they wanted to buy, they could. And at this point, when the scoreline is 8-1, to one, you have to start getting a little bit desperate. You have to start taking a couple more risks. A buy like this, how many more opportunities are you going to have? The max loss bonus in play. There's Dude, the coach of Big, having a chance to chime on in and have that conversation with in-game leader Tabson in the middle. But what's the way out? Susan has bought the AWP. It looks like it may even just be a hero AWP. I know that sounds like a strange thing to say. This was the opening there, and you're right. The Amanek conversation, it looks very bleak on Dust too. But the fact he hasn't been rattled, the fact that he's back in the thick of things and having a great game now, influential factor for G2 in this scoreline so far. Cat for Sirison to work with here. So it was a purchased AWP and a half buy around that. So they're really banking on Sirison finding impact again. He's the only reason they have a round so far on the board. See if he can replicate that. Look at this passive stance from G2. Very, very passive stuff. And the reason they're doing this right now is they're not quite certain what type of buy they're looking at on the other side. The money situation, as we saw, it was possible. It was definitely possible to have rifles and sure. the AWP in place. So right now, just waiting for any aggression. They haven't been met with any. Now they need to start having a crawl and sending out a bit of a scouting party to see what's on the other side. Newbie question. Like, it's not just a financial decision from Hunter. Like buying the UMP when he suspects he's against a lower buy, is it? I mean, is there, is there a strategical element to it or is he exclusively just pinching pennies when he can? It's curious, right? Because they do have a, a he does have a little bit more cash than yeah. say some of the teammates he's, he's playing with right now. So uh, I feel like I think it is just because of the buy he's against. Right. Uh, and maybe they want to use him going first somewhere. So if he loses that UMP, it's not like there's an AK picked on up. So oh, I don't hate that theory positives. as well, yeah. Nico just in the off angle of that shadow advantage. Any step further. And then it was going to pop through this smoke. It's worked wonders. Hunter leaping through with that SFG. He's enabled the opening frag. And they're just going to cut one by one. Here we go. And now Searson just looking to hold on to what he brought into this round. G2. <laughs> Nine to one. Let me pose a question to... Oh, okay. Well, I'm still going to pose the question, Tizzy, and you're not going to stop that. Let me pose a question to you. If you just had map one that was relatively convincing for big, you yeah. put yourself in big's shoes. You're in this map right now. Nine one. Maybe you get four on the half, would you prefer just to get blown out and move straight into map number three, conserve your energy and focus on Inferno? Or would you prefer to be able to have a competitive affair, but maybe lose like 16 to 10? Oh, it's not still going, is it? It's still going. <laughs> Mouseforce Team Liquid, you can see the update there. That's on the B stream, really easy to access. If you're interested, just go ahead and add the B to that ESL underscore CSGO. And we're going to be getting into our 11th round of play. In answer to your question, 
I think it's going to be down to maybe you just you don't you know you don't put your full pedal to the metal here on Mirage. I'm not. I'm talking. Everyone, just try and find your own footing. Try and remind yourself what you're capable of in this one. I do think it's. It's you know it's not like they've written out of this. If we see a nine six half, you know we're, we're gonna look like we're gonna feel like idiots. Yeah, well they're gonna need that nine six half, right? Otherwise it's gonna be super super difficult on that T side. So this is where it has to start. They need to start getting the CT rounds and now Jax has just jumped on in towards a Molotov, so he is in a lot of trouble. He has to hide behind that smoke. Oh, spotted towards window. There was a chance onto Tabson there. Down to forty eight. Quick mid control here. Yeah, look Hunter's at Hunter. Up. I don't know if Searson's expecting this. Definitely Ooh. not. Yeah, and he's seen the barrel. Uh, Hunter's uh, got a gap to pip. Jungle is next challenge. Tabson's headed B, so now he's got a lot of room to maneuver. This one's doomed. Yeah, G2 have got so much control, and they don't even know it. Big, so passive. And Amanek, another opening onto Searson. A complete 180 from Dust2. Hunter, a nice catch as well on Keto. He was not anticipating second there. Even dropping the smoke, they cannot use that avenue back into the site. Even CT's a question mark. Bomb coming late through Palace. And already Big Clan just reserving themselves or residing themselves to the save. Oh, wow. There's, it's such a contrast right Triple now. Triple OT. Such a contrast. Amanek at this point is now 5-0 and o as far as entries go. In that first map, he was just getting absolutely owned. Absolutely owned. This is such a change up. It's great to see. You know, I'm not sure if that's just Amanek being a stoic individual and being able to get himself out of it, whether the coach has gotten in his ear, whether his teammates have G'd him up. But either way, their map choice is looking fantastic. Now that 9-6, which almost feels mandatory for Big, is no longer possible. Yeah. And whilst, you know, this is a tough one to watch, I'm sure, for Big Clan fans, it's also a perfect demonstration as to why we use those best of threes to determine who the team should progress here at IEM Cologne. Such, I mean, it looks like two different teams as you swap the maps. G2 obviously very proficient in Mirage and exploiting perhaps a gap in that big clan map pool. You were diving into it earlier and you could see that there was a lot of red as you just described, but also some close results. It seems like their Mirage is in the works and not quite as refined, certainly not as G2. Oh, that Molly might cause a bit of chaos. Does he have to swing out? Bye. <laughs> He's burning. Yeah, they definitely heard that one. A big gun to lose right there. And this one does really feel like it is going to simmer away here. Kicking and screaming, bigger. Uh, more like whimpering their way out of map number two. And like we were discussing before, when you one up in the series right now, that there's a few things that this can do. That's the opening from Amanek to kick this round off. And at that point, it was already too easy because we could see Hunter had full control. So whatever gaps there are are just being exploited right here. And now it's a fast mid control. They're quick on this. Yeah, Jax again caught just before the smoke blooms. Hunter's not slowing down for anyone. Big fine taps in the first. Good counter flash. It looks like Zantara wants to challenge out here. And oh, Nico. Not an easy shot to hit, but he's managed to provide it. Now only three. Here's your long range on his UMP. Is one out on Nexus Lurk. The rest in mid. Searson confirms that he's lucky to be alive after that exchange. He will look to reposition. It looks like G2 want to posture and check into the B side of the map. Keto's there to provide support. Nico sniffing around A side. I wonder if he reports nothing. They might start to change their mind. This is really weird right now. There's going to be a fight. Hold on. So through the underpass, Tizian. He, he is. Checks it. What a shot, though, from Hunter. Anticipated it. Amanet crawls in. B site's open for business. Searson on the rotate. Nico should catch him. Oh, it's all over, Red Rover, for this boy here. 11. G2. Let's go. It's so quick. They are not letting up. Yeah, and you can see the gear shift from Big. They realized they needed to start contesting, right? They had to go all in and just fight. That's what the change up is like. All right, boys, we just have to take the fight to them. We have to see if we can win out these fights. And they can't. They just can't. This is uh, one of these situations where if it was the shoe on the other foot, if G2 were on the CT side and Big only had one round, and then they salvaged four on the half, and it's 11 4 score line, and then they get the pistol, they win the first gun round, sure, that entire narrative can start again. But this is the CT side where Big only have one round. So what just happened on Dust2, G2 are responding in kind, and they're actually putting even more hurt on this scenario right here. And it's really how hard do you take this loss if you're big as well. That's another conversation point. Do you take this? Is this all of the wind out of the sails? Does it make you forget everything that you just achieved on Dust2 to even put you in this position to go to the third? You want to make sure that mentally you're still in check as a team. Sirison back into another AWP. Pistols around it again. 
And this has just been the story of the first half for Big. Time and time again, the AWP has been in play, but it's felt like we've seen more Deagle kills than too much else. When it's this brutal, when it's this extreme, when it's this one-sided, do you think it's kind of it's almost easier to just dismiss it as opposed to those heartbreaking? I would hope so. The 16-14 is nothing worse. 16-14 yeah. or an overtime loss feels worse than getting 16-1. And let me tell you, I've been 16-1 a couple of times. But, but Chad, that feefeling of being 16-1, there is like a helplessness attached to it. Yeah. Like you are confronted with feeling like, God, I'm just poo at this video game. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have felt that a couple of times yeah. too. But it runs away from you, right? It's really quick because you never really feel like you're getting contesting in any of these rounds. Like how many close clutch situations have we had? That not many whatsoever. So when you're not even getting a chance to fight and you're just losing your fights, losing the jewels at that point it's like oh well yeah okay let's just get to that third let's just get this one out of the way yeah i haven't felt like i've had to do any commentary really no because it, look the the crazy moments they haven't existed here it has been g2 coming in and just absolutely beating down big and you know what for all you viewers at home maybe that's great because you get to keep your eyes on that triple oh, OT that's game true. that's going on yeah you can ch check it back in with <laughs> us for inferno yeah wait until the half and then you know if the scoreline does end up being 11-4 and they win pistol and that story i was just talking about starts uh -huh, uh -huh. you'll be here in time yeah true so you haven't missed anything so far guys let's see if the script continues Tabson's Deagle, he's looking the wrong way, but he still finds a head. He's got the aim, this boy, and so has Hunter. I think this Mirage has been good for his confidence as he's starting to look very snappy. And so Searson's got himself a pretty dud hand here. Oh, great find over the smoke. He's miles away and opts for the long road through market. He's going to maintain and hold on to his signature weapon for the rest of this one. So not only are opening kills an issue for big, multi-kills are the bigger issue. So right now, at this juncture of the game, I, I think if we take a little bit of a looky-loo here, big have a total of three multi-kills between their five players. On the other side of things, Nico, Nexa, and Hunter have three multi-kills each. That's uh, it's not bad. It's a handful, isn't it, considering the amount of rounds we've played? <laughs> Three multi kills each for three players. Actually, we'll put we'll put Hunter up to four. Hunter has four. So Hunter has more than the entire team of big combined. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know how else we can better shape this picture. Um, yeah, and they've got four timeouts remaining as well. G2 haven't felt the need to uh, take any of those. Big clan have burnt through three of them uh, during this 12 round run. Oh, maybe we do. This looks like business as usual for Nexa there. All right, well, <laughs> three rounds is the maximum here for Big. Ooh, those bullets ain't far off, sis, and tagged up, and oh, oh wow. no way. Oh, he did everything right. Jax is just better today, it seems. Great shot. Oh, Flash just a little shy of the mark. Just a bit too deep for Keto's tight line. They advance with a flash of their own. Three of them in connector and one towards short. They definitely want to fight for mid control. Yeah. And that incendiary enables them to have a little look and to set themselves up to contain Hunter. And Amanek, oh. another shot hits. Everything hits for G2. Hunter now to strike. Oh, it's just too easy. Okay, Keto. Okay. Oh, we haven't had one of these yet, have we? We haven't. We have it, and that's Malik. Is that Malik getting that loud? I have, he's the soft, most soft-spoken coach I've ever heard. He sounds like a demon. He's really yeah. needed this. You're firing the boys up in yeah. a big way here. And this is the confidence, right? Because we've been talking about what this means for Big, how they're going to be able to recover. Think about this for G2. You lose map one, all right, who cares? We're just coming in here, we've absolutely pants these guys. The confidence must be swelling. I mean, Absolutely especially for Amanek, I, I feel like him have coming into this, but coming not only into this, but top of the scoreboard, 12 frags from him, yep. opening kills, winning his head-to-head -head against Searson. Don't forget he was like 0-7 in the head-to-head. -head. It was something mad in between those two in the first map. And now Amanek has taken control, as have G2. Does really set the stage for Inferno, though. Yeah, uh, two, uh, I guess Dusty wasn't a blowout, right? But uh, They got two rounds in the second half, Chad, 16-8. Right. Yeah. I mean, all right, we'll, la we'll label them as a blowout. One a little bit Much. more so than yeah. the other, but we'll, we'll put them in the same category. That's two didn't feel like this at any point. No. no, no I, I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. We've got four G2 members, a pack charging to mid. It's already over for Tabs and lights out for him. Nico's the one to flick the switch. Flick a flick. 
how much time could possibly be left in this one right here. Oh yeah, that's another game we could play. Oh, another one. Okay, oh. 3v5. Well, I think Big Clan have answered your question as to which approach they would take when they're 11 down. Yeah, and I, I don't know if that was their choice, but now they better just uh, get on with it. Yeah. Like, when you're staring down the barrel of a 14 one half, I wouldn't be putting all of your energy into the second. No, and that, that's you feel like that's the wrong attitude to have, but look at this, the kills just keep coming. It's just Centara's one man left. And no resistance at all. 14 on the half. G2 are making them look silly here on Mirage. It's their pick and they're showing us why. We'll take a quick break and come back for the last two rounds of play. Future pros, we have another execute for you. 14 to 1 on the half for the T side of G2 on their map pick here, Mirage. I don't think this one has too much longer left until we get over to map number three, Inferno, because Big have not been able to put up any resistance whatsoever. Chad Sponge Virtual here, joined by Alex Machine Richardson. Howdy. Oh, sorry. Good day. Good day, mate. And uh, look, this has been a shellacking, uh, a Bakugan. Beat down. Yeah, Bakugan. We you, all know you that one. Beyblades before. That's another uh, like cartoon <laughs> yeah. thingy. With cartoon thingy. Cartoon thingy that kids watch and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so you haven't missed a lot, and the one expert odds favoring G2 for a very big reason. Let's see how many rounds are left in this one. I would love to see a 16-1. Is we it got, really this quiet, or do we not have sound? We've got two sets of Util. There we go. It was really this quiet. Okay, so two smokes sail through the sky, and ah. Nico looks like he's not quite finished yet. 16 frags and three jacks is flanking them and tapping their heads. Chad, I believe your requested 16-1 is a couple of frags away. Tapson's trying to change the... Oh my God, they're hitting everything right now. They warmed up, especially. Yeah. Map one, dust two, they were just like, yeah, we're here for a bit of fun. Look at this. Oh, he tried to stabilize his aim. It costs him the frag. He'll have to back away. Hunter just keeping him contained. He has ramp on lock and key. Ah, the no armor Glock 1v4. Bomb ticking in his favor, at least. Tabson. There is a kid. Already tapped another head and... <laughs> no issues for Hunter. All right, that's 15. We are speed running this map. Looking to break some records. <laughs> Keeping the memes up, right? <laughs> Don't forget this time, please. These guys defuse. Honestly, right. I th I, there must be some sort of like meme training camp that the uh, G2 players are uh, in inducted into. Everyone has to go through Ocelot to make sure you're funny enough to join the team. Yeah. Right? That's, that's the deal. All right, well, big ha with the plant. Or is yeah. Well, it's just, I'm just going to say it's the embodiment of like, you know, saying it loses its power. Yeah. Like as soon as you just start t taking the piss out of yourselves, yeah. <laughs> people don't feel so good taking the piss out of you. Uh, I learned that lesson many years ago. That was a school trick. It's yep. easier to do it that way, guys. It it's, is. It's so much easier to do it that way. How many kills do you reckon Big are getting this round? Five. Okay. All right. Score 15 to two. Big. Here we go. I'll tell you what, you do the play-by-play, -play, I'll do the colour. All right. So we see the default spread. Centara is holding that A push. Jax has opted for a little bit of a presence in that B app. So be able to be canary in the coal mine in that respect. Mid control though, guarded. Not going to be contested just yet. Seems like Nico might want to take a glance. A flash perhaps to be provided. Nico's going to swing out window here. Head spotted. Communication coming on through, and Amanek, he has a couple to deal with here in Connector. Walking on up into his den. Amanek with the Famous in hand, about to unleash Fury. Flashed on up, he's going to get one kill. Instantly traded by Keto here. They're doubled up on CT. Hunter and Nexa are playing real passive on this. 
The bomb's on its way, but I'm not sure if they'll be able to contest that plant. Oh, Nico easily steps out window, takes down Sirius, and then they're thrust forward into the site. More kills continue to fall as Keto does get the trade, but the bomb needs to go down on A. It's and deny. starting to plant here. The peak comes through. The bomb is down, and Nexa, he's traded by Zantares. We're finding ourselves in a two-on-two -two situation. Jax from Connector takes down one more, and Zantares falls. Jax will finish things off, and that's 16 to 1. G2 have done it, and we're going to map number three. Inferno's around the corner. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with all the action just after the desk.